This morning, by the grace of God, I will be sharing on a topic that I title, uh, a subject that I title, The Bottom Line. The Bottom Line. You can also say the heart of the matter or the conclusion of the issue. <laughs> Whichever one you want to take is valid. The bottom line. You know, God wants us to understand what the bottom line is in all of this whole situation that we find ourselves today. For a scripture, I want us to see the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, from verse 9, and I will read all through to verse 14. It reads, Not only was the teacher wise, I'm reading Ecclesiastes chapter 12, from verse 9 to 14. Not only was the teacher wise, but also he imparted knowledge to the people. He pondered and searched out and set in order many proverbs. The teacher searched to find just the right words. And he wrote, and what he wrote was upright and true. <laughs> uh, the words of the wise are like goods. Their collected sayings are firmly embedded nails given by one shepherd. Be warned, my son, of anything in addition to them. Of the making of many books, there is no end. And much study where is the body. Now all has been heard. <laughs> Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. Well, bless God for the reading of his words. My emphasis is on verse 12 to 14. Is that of the making of books there is no end and much study where is the, sto the, the body. Now all has been heard. Here's the conclusion of the matter. Fear God, keep his commandment for this is the whole duty of a man. I'm sure that most of you must have been so inundated by several messages. So many messages. Some from official quarters, others unofficial, many fake news flying around, and you have from the religious quarters as well, people sending messages on various platforms, all the social platforms. We are socially congregating instead of socially distancing by way of information uh, pa uh, um, sharing. <laughs> But I want to say to you that in all of this information, have we really established the bottom line? And that is what I want us to establish today, that what is really the bottom line here? I sense the prophetic anointing on me this morning. And perhaps I'm going to be making certain utterances and, 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 and statements that you may want to put down and watch the timeline of God and see what God has to say to his body. Of many of this information we are gathering, the Bible says that there is no end to it. There is no end to people's opinions. There is no end to the information we get sent out every now and again. Friends, there is no end to all the social media propagandas. 
Everyone has one form of agenda or the other. But the question is, what is really the main agenda? Because the main agenda is God's agenda. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth. He is the almighty God. So, what is God's agenda? Because God's agenda is the bottom line. It is the conclusion of the matter. It is the crux of the matter. It is the heart of the issue. You need to know what the bottom line is. And it's simple. Fear God. <clears throat> Keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. You see, God's word can be so simple, yet we miss it so much. When we begin to magnify pandemic and, and uh, the pandemic, and we begin to magnify that over and above the word of God, sometimes we tend to lose focus of the word of God. In, um, um, we tend to lose focus of God in our season. We are so much into analysis paralysis. <laughs> We have so many analyses of this whole situation has not necessarily preferred any cogent solution. Governments are failing at this. Prime ministers, presidents, ministers, governors are all being subject to this pandemic some of them already suffer they're already sufferers of this disease but i want to say god has a word it reminds me in luke chapter 13 when there was an issue in israel where there was a a, 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 a mishap in israel the Bible says in Luke chapter 13 verse 1, I think to 3 or 4, or four, or four the scripture makes us understand, reminds us that they came to Jesus and they are wanting his own analysis, paralysis in it. I really want us to look at that scripture before I go on. In Luke chapter 13, and Jesus looked at them. <laughs> the Bible says, Now there were some at the time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate mixed with, with their sacrifices. Jesus answered them. They wanted his own opinion. And Jesus answered them. He says, Do you think these Galileans were worse sinners than all the Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you no. But unless you repent... You too will all perish. Verse 4. All the 18 who died when the Torah of Siloam fell on them. Do you think that we are more guilty than others living in Jerusalem? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all perish. What does that mean? It means that it doesn't matter what happens on the face of the earth. God's agenda is still very much intact. God's agenda has not changed. God's agenda is about bringing his kingdom on earth. And he's saying to us today, repent. I want to say to you that there is nothing that, has hap that is happening physically that doesn't have a spiritual con connotation to it. And it will be the height of deception to just think that this is just happening by chance. <laughs> It will be the height of being deluded to say that this is just happening by chance. I want to say that things happen. There's a spiritual trigger to every physical occurrences in our lives. We do not know how baby is formed. Yet, we have the baby anyway. But I tell you, this is the same way. Why has Jesus been birthed? 
God's agenda is still sure. He says, repent. It doesn't matter what is going on. Fear God. And obey his commandments. That is the whole duty of man. And I'm going to take you to Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15 aligns this word for us, for us to see. Exodus chapter 15, this is the first covenant of health that God had with his children. I'm talking about his children. And I want to show you that except the church is healed. The Bible says like the priest, like the people. Like the people, like the priest in Hosea. <coughs> except the church begins to take responsibility. Except the children of God in whom the world is waiting for the manifestation, for their manifestation, according to Romans chapter 8. We will be here for a while. And I believe according to God's word, there is an elect God is raising up. And I believe that you are one of those elect. If you believe it, you will say amen to that. You are one of the elect of God. Hear the word of God in Exodus chapter 15. <coughs> it reads from verse 22. The Moses led the children of Israel. All right, let, let's just jump. Uh, let's continue. The Moses led the children of Israel from the Red Sea and they went into the desert of Shur. For three days they traveled without finding water. When they came to Marah, they could they, they could they could not drink the they could not drink its water because it was bitter. That is why the place was called Marah. So the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What are we going to drink? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed them a piece of wood. Showed him a piece of wood. Then he threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. Now, this is what the Lord said next. There the Lord made a decree and a law for them, and there he tested them. He said, If you... Listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes and, uh, and do what is right in his eyes. If you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I have brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals you. <laughs> I will not bring any of these diseases I brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals you. Now, verse 27. Then they came to Elim, where there were twelve springs and 70 palm trees and they camped there near the waters friends they camped there near the waters this is a covenant of god when god has provided the water the sweet water of the word of god he will test you by the sweet water of the word of god that all you need to do is to obey the word of God. Obey the commands of the Lord and do what is right, notwithstanding the situation. And he says, I will not bring any of these diseases upon you. Verse 27 is very prophetic. And there were 12 springs and 70 palm trees. And they come there near the waters. Friends, 12 is the number of government. 12 is the number of the, is the scripture number that represents the church. The government tells the government of the church. 
and 70 is the number that represents nations. 70 is the number that represents nations. What does this mean? Until you have the 12 waters intact and it is not bitter, it is not being corrupted, then the 70 will flourish. The 70 will flourish. So I want to say to you that there are 70 the student, the, I want to say to you that the, until you have the church intact, the nations of the earth cannot be. The nations of the earth will struggle. It is because of us. God is looking for somebody on the face of the earth who will stand and declare. And declare. God would not have de destroyed the land of Sodom and Gomorrah if there were ten, if there were people who were standing in the gap, we have so many Christians on the surface of the earth. But most times we have failed to take responsibility for the things God has called us to. For the things God has earmarked us for the kingdom mandate. What you have these days is pretty much commercialization of the gospel. The gospel is reduced to give me, give me, give me God. Bless you ministries. Without understanding that the God of this, the, the word of God says that there is a kingdom agenda. What is this kingdom agenda? It is the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom. We are in the end times. Friends, you will see these things you, when you go. I want to encourage you to read the book of Matthew chapter 24, the entire chapter. And Luke chapter 21. It will make you aware. And the Bible says, and the gospel shall be preached across every nations of the earth, of, of the nations of the earth. And then the end will come. What am I trying to say here? That God is tearing us up again as a church. And bringing us to the point of repentance. That until we come again and repent and do the first work. That tree. God wants to plant again in us. And bring back again the tree of life. Because that is the healing of the nations. And I will show you briefly. And on Friday at the prayer meeting I'm going to be teaching these more in, in depth. But I just want to touch a few things for us today to see that we need to repent and return to God so that we can partake of that water of life, of that tree of life. Hallelujah. Let's see Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, and I'm going to show you from verse 1. It says, To the angel of the church in, of, in Ephesus, write, These are the words of him who hold the seven stars in the right Hand and walk amongst the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your, persever and your pre pre perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked men. And I've tested those who claim to be apostles and are not, and I've found them false. God knows our position. God knows that we're genuinely born again. But he says, you have preserved and endured hardship for my name. And I've not grown weary. God knows our positive dispositions. For him. But he said this. He said, yet I have, I hold these against you. That you have forsaken your first love. There is a first love that we have for God. What brought us here initially? What brought us to church originally? Is the fear of God. Is the obedience of God. Is the preaching of the gospel. He says, remember from the heights you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. When was the last time you preached the gospel to somebody? When was the last time you shared the gospel to somebody? I want to say to you that one of the great benefits of these of, of this pand pandemic, of this lockdown, is, is the fact that there is never a time in the history of man where the airwaves on a Sunday like these is bombarded with the gospel of Jesus Christ.
Herein Matthew 24 is fulfilled. And this gospel shall be preached as a witness in every nation of the earth. Today Saudi Arabia is getting the gospel. Today someone in China is watching on the gospel. Today in America they are getting the gospel. On the airwaves and every demon in the air is being challenged today in the name of Jesus. And I want to tell you that there is a shifting. There is a shaking already. And it says, if you do not repent, if you do not repent, I will come and remove your lampstand from you. Here is a declaration of God saying to you, you need to repent as a church. Otherwise, the lampstand will be removed. What does that mean? You'll be gathering like a church and you'll be acting like a Christian. However, the fire is gone. The Bible talks about, uh, uh, to, to say, tells us about, about Samson who did not know that the power has left him. The Spirit of God had left him. And the Bible says that he went in the same way thinking that he had the Spirit of God in him. So I want to encourage you. It is time to repent. It is time to repent so that we can gain healing from the nations. It says in verse 7, it says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give him the right to eat of the tree of life. This is the same thing we're looking at in, in Exodus. And on Friday, I'll couple all of that together for you, but I just want to pick out something for you here today. He says, you have the right to eat of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. The tree of life is for the remedy and the healing of the nations. According to Revelation chapter 22, the same book of Revelation chapter 22, if you read from verse 1, it says, Then the angel of the Lord showed me a river of water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God. This is the same river. It says, down the middle of the great street, high, a great, a great street of the city. On each side stood the tree of life. Do you remember the trees we read about in, in Exodus? It says, bearing 12 crops of fruits, yielding its fruits every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. This is the tree of life God is saying he will give to you that overcome. Because that tree is for the leaves of those trees are for the healing of the nation. You, the healing of the nation is predicated on the repentance of the church. Therefore, God is calling us back to the heart of the matter. The tree of life will trigger... The, the, leaf, the, the tree of life that the leaves will trigger the healings is based on our repentance. It's based on our doing the first work. What is the first work? The preaching of the gospel. The preaching of the gospel. When was the last time? I want to say to you that this event has led to many giving their lives to Jesus. I have seen it. I'm a partaker of it. As a result of this lockdown, many are encountering Jesus already. I am a living witness of that. Hallelujah. And in 2 Corinthians, just to confirm that, verse chapter 7 is from verse 13. It says, if my people who are called by my name. He's talking about my people, not just anybody. There are so many people on the face on, in the land. But God has his own people. He says, if my people who are called by my name. Will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. That means if my people who are, who are called by my name will take responsibility. Will accept the sin of the nations. When Daniel realized that it was time. It was, it was the, 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 the release of the children of Israel from captivity in Babylon was predicated on, the, on, on, on them rising up and taking, uh, taking, take, taking responsibility, he started to pray. He started to repent. He started to repent. He started to repent. The same was Nehemiah. Nehemiah started to repent before he rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem. 
I want you to know that it is time for us to repent. To repent. He says, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. For the sake of the elect, God wants to heal their land. God wants to heal our land. God wants to heal our land. God wants to heal our land. Oh, there has been so many pandemoniums around the earth. But God wants to heal our land. It will take us as children of God, those who are called by the name of God, to repent. To repent. To repent. It is time. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 4, it says, For judgment will begin in the household of God. And I want to say to you, it is time for us to repent on behalf of this nation, on behalf of the nations that you represent, and say, God have mercy, forgive us, and stand in the gap, and take responsibility, because that is the bottom line is the returning of the church is the returning of, of is the taking responsibility of the church no more of this you know I, I, I doubt how many times we we, 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 we we actually share the true gospel of Jesus Christ how many Christians are actually winning souls to the Lord how many Christians are actually telling people about Jesus Christ how many Christians whose life represents and ex exemplifies the name of the Lord Jesus, the person of the Lord Jesus? And I want to encourage you, friends. It is time to repent. It is time to return. Fear God again. Fear God again. So much impunity in our land. The lack of fear of God. The height of I I iniquity and immorality. And God is looking for someone who will take responsibility. Who will take responsibility of the nations of the earth. Because when the children of Israel saw that water, God set a, 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 a precedent, God set a decree, a law. If you will obey me, I will heal you. And none of these diseases will come. If you will repent, God will heal our land. God will heal the nations. He will release the leaves of, from the fruit of, of, of from the tree of life. And for every nation there is a leaf. For Africa there is a leaf. For Nigeria there is a leaf. For South Africa there is a leaf. For the United Kingdom there is a leaf. For America there is a leaf. Australia there is a leaf. Every part of the world there is a leaf. And God is counting on. The repentance of the church. The repentance of the body of Christ. The repentance of those who are called by the name of the Lord. This is the bottom line. This is the bottom line. Enough of all the analysis. It is time to pray. Let us bow our heads.